Okay, we're on going on to question number three here. Uh, Alden paints a unassembled gift box to use for his sister's birthday gift. Okay, so here's the gift box. Well, the base of the box measures two inches by five inches. When assembled, the box measures seven inches tall. If Aiden only paints the outside of the unassembled box, how many square inches will he paint? Okay. So it measures two by five by seven. Now a lot of people in class, you guys just you just multiply those. Two times five is ten. Ten times seven is seventy, and that's answer choice B. But here's the thing: um, that's volume. If you measure three things together, you're measuring the volume. You're measuring uh, what could fit inside that gift present when the box is put together. But we're not putting anything inside the box. We're painting the outside of the box. And in fact, if you look at all your answer choices. They all have square inches. In fact, the question says square inches, right? So I'll have this number two. That number two is a is a clue for you. It means you are multiplying two things together. You should not be multiplying three things together. If you multiply three things together, you're going to end up with cubed, right? You'd have inches cubed if you were multiplying these three numbers by each other, okay? We don't have that. We have squared. So, um... Unfortunately, there's no formula for surface area on our reference sheet. You just have to remember that surface area means the sum of all surfaces, right? The area of all surfaces. So we're going to find the area of this rectangle and this rectangle and this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle. Add them all together, and that'll give us the answer. All right. So let's take a look at uh, what these things measure. So I'm going to label my drawing. It says it measures 2 by 5. So that is two here, probably, and five here, I'm guessing. Okay. So that's two, that's five, which means this one's five, which means this one's two. Okay, and then the height of the box when it's assembled is seven. So that'd be this length right here, this length right here, this length right here, 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 and here, right? Okay, I got enough here. Uh, this rectangle up here is seven times two. See there, you're multiplying two dimensions together, right? So you get 14 square inches. Here I have 2 times 5, which is 10. Here I have 2 times, oh yeah, this is 7, so that's 14 again. Here I have 5 times 7 is 35. Here I have 5 times 7 is 35. And here I have 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, so you see you have the bottom and the top are the same size, right? These two sides are the same size, and these two sides are the same size. It makes sense. It wouldn't be a box if opposite sides weren't the same. If I add these together, let's see, uh, what could I do? I got two 35s, which is a 70. I got two 10s, which is 20. I got two 14s, which is 28. Add them together, you get something that ends with 8. And I'll just keep going. 7 plus 2 plus 2 is, four, is 11. Right? 118 square inches. Okay. All right, perfect. Question number four. A rectangular prism has a base that is congruent to the base of a rectangular pyramid. The heights, h, of the two figures are also congruent. If the volume of the pyramid is 100 cubic inches, which expression can be used to find the volume of the prism? So again, no pictures here. I'm just going to draw a real quick picture. Here's my rectangular prism. Boy, I kind of washed that one up. Okay. Here's my rectangular... Whoa. Let's draw it the same way. Here's my rectangular pyramid. It's the same height, so it looks something like this. Okay, something like that. They're the same height, the same base, same height. Okay, that's what congruent means. If the volume of this one is 100, what's the volume of this one? Well, we talked about this before, right? There are, you can make this out of paper. Three of these put together gives you one of these. So if your volume here is 100, then the volume here should be 3 times 100, which is choice H. Okay, so just knowing this, this is actually, this can be one of the fastest questions, one of the fastest TEK standards to answer on the star test. If you just remember that, yes, there are three pyramids in a prism, there are three pyramids in a prism, there are three pyramids in a prism, you can go through and answer questions like this one, uh, again, like number one that we did earlier, those can be ones that you can answer really quickly just by knowing that one little fact.